Good day everyone, I'm Joyce Valenzuela and I will be discussing curriculum evaluation using the CITP model of Staffeldeen. Now, why is it important to understand the process of curriculum evaluation? First, it is because evaluation is at the center of all improvements, whether we talk about the quality of education or the effective working of a school. Researchers have emphasized the need for evaluation of schools because it helps in the quality control, monitoring of quality, quality assurance, and quality development of curriculum. Now, what is CITP model? First, it is proposed by Daniel Stoffel Beam in 1983. The CITP model, or the context, input, process, and product model can be used for both types of evaluation. It involves the formative evaluation, and the summative evaluation. According to Sachs in 1980, formative evaluation is conducted during the instructional phase, allowing teachers to know if students are achieving the instructional objectives as well as the lesson is done on time and to find ways for improvement. Now, the summative evaluation is done at the end of an instructional program. This is to check the quality and quantity of learning of students. As stated by Wersma and Gers in 1990, it provides evidence if the satisfactory work or modifications required and the desired outcomes are attained. Now, there are advantages of the CIPP model in curriculum evaluation. First advantage of using the CIPP model is that evaluators are given with holistic view of elements by, by evaluating its context, input, process, and output. Second, it can be done systematically, which means that it aims in fulfilling the general needs of the evaluation. And the difference of the CIPP model to other evaluation models is that it focuses on the context for the evaluation of teaching, learning, and development process. This is according to Suffolk Dean and Schinkfield in 2007. Now we look further on the four dimensions of the CIPP model. First, is the context. Now the context refers to the need and opportunities that defines the goals and objectives on the basis of which the outcomes are attained. Some questions that context deals with are the following. First, are the aims of the school suitable or not? Do the objectives generate from aims? Are the courses taught relevant to the aims? And is the school fulfilling social needs? The second one is the input. It involves the resources, infrastructure, curriculum, and content needed to implement the teaching learning processes. Some questions that come under the context of input are, what are the different learning skills that students will gain? Is there any balance between the practical and the theory of work? What type of resources should the school use for effective teaching and learning? Are there science laboratories and libraries? And how are teachers using their teaching skills for effective teaching learning? And lastly, do the teachers have appropriate knowledge, skills, and attitude for teaching? The third one is the process. It includes the teaching learning processes and activities. It includes all the processes that are necessary for the implementation of different activities and their formative evaluation. Process deals with the following questions, such as, has ICT been used in many school practices? Can formative evaluation of teaching learning process be done? Are teachers and students of school actively participate in activities? Is there effective two-way communication between the administration, teachers, and staff? And which type of activities are conducted in the school? The fourth one is the product. It involves the skills, the values, the attitudes, and the results that are needed to identify the outcomes and effectiveness of the educational program. Some important questions with respect to the product are, what are the achievements of the students of the school in co-curricular and curricular activities? What are the different summative and formative assessment strategies used by the school? How will students practically implement what they have learned? Are there registers for recording of activities of students? How could quality of teachers and school reputation be improved?
Now, let's all remember that the CIPP model deals with the products or outcomes not only at the end, but also at different points during the beginning, implementation, and designing of the educational program. Outcomes are then mapped with objectives, weaknesses are noted, and expected changes are made for the betterment of the quality of education. Now that we know the fundamentals of the CITP model, let's take a look on how this model works for quality evaluation at school level. This case study is entitled Evaluation of Educational Quality of a Welfare School System in Rawalpindi Using the Stufflebean CITP Model. Here we will be able to understand more how CITP model is used in evaluating their curriculum or educational system. But first, let's go to the methodology of the study. The design of the study was qualitative in nature. As I've mentioned a while ago, it is a case study of a school system. The population of the study included a principal, the head of wings, and teachers from the two main branches of a welfare school system in Rawalpindi. The, the principal heads of each wing, a total of eight wings, and eight teachers were selected, four from each branch. Now, methods used are document analysis for examining the context of the school system. This includes the school's objectives, missions, and goals. For identifying the inputs, such as resources, curriculum, and content, the researchers devised a checklist of 31 items. This is based from Stoffel Bean in 2002. The researchers have also conducted two class observations. This is to explore the processes and the inputs and conducted semi-structured interviews of teachers, heads, and principal as to clarify and validate their answers on the survey. Now first, let's go to the context evaluation. This is done through document analysis. Context evaluation addresses important issues owing to which many scholars emphasize using context evaluation for school curriculum as well as textbook appraisal. For this research, context was evaluated through document analysis that revealed that the primary objective of the school system is providing high-quality education by engaging students in adeptly designed learning processes. The major obje objective or another major objective is that the, the school system focus on the development of the character, which is in accordance with the Islamic values as well as enable them to meet the challenges of the ever-growing competitive world. Teacher Wan said that to provide quality education to middle class is one of their objectives, and it has a very economical free structure, best available resources, and devoted teachers. She also said that there are separate buildings for boys and girls from primary to secondary level. Another teacher explained that the school is clear about its mission, that it had maintained its prestige. The participants emphasized that the aims of the school are smart, which means that they are specific, measurable, acceptable, relevant, and time-bound. Likewise, the focus, of in the focus of the school system is the student's social, mental, physical, and moral development to make them beneficial to the society. Now here in the Philippines, we have educational programs implemented associated with the Department of Education. One example is the MTAP Saturday Activity. This is partnered with the Mathematics Teachers Association of the Philippines, which aims to contribute in improving the quality of mathematics education. Here, if this program is designed to improve the student's scores or performance on standardized mathematics tests, Evaluators should take a look on the data from the past school years to determine the level of students' achievement in math, then compare with the present state. This is in preparation for the planning activity for the coming school year. Okay, and according to Nation and McLeanster in 2010, let's all remember that the basic purpose of evaluation is to ensure that planning is successful and is going in the right direction. Next is the input evaluation. Input evaluation includes available and existing resources for attaining objectives and fulfilling needs. The school, 
has a well-balanced curriculum which includes an Oxford-based perspectives for junior level and forms a board syllabi for senior classes. Concepts are thought in a logical and learner-friendly manner of experts and experienced teachers who are trained to practice and apply the knowledge. According to the participants, the course content is clearly defined and relevant to practical problems. Another, another finding is that there is ideal teacher-student ratio, which is one teacher is to 12 students. The teacher schedule for, meanwhile, is three periods a day, and then the remainder of the time is to check the written work of the student. All resources such as teachers, staff, computer lab, well-equipped science labs, playground, learning equipment, activity room, and auditorium, as well as books and syllabi, are available for students. Available in the sense that students can share the laboratories, library, and auditorium of the main branch when required. The buildings of the school are on rent, but the authorities, but the authorities are working hard to maintain the quality of infrastructure. Teacher 3 said that class and school environment both help the students in learning because the classrooms are wide. Okay. Meanwhile, for the Philippines, in the Philippines, the current DepEd parameter limits the students to a maximum of 30 students for kindergarten, 35 students for grades 1 to 3, 40 students for grades 5 up to senior high school students. The teacher schedule, according to memorand DepEd Memorandum Number 291, Series 2008, and DepEd Order Number 16, Series 2009, teachers should render six-hour actual teaching work inside the school campus and to spend the remaining two hours per day outside of the school campus to prepare and perform the following teaching-related activities. Given here are the research, lesson plan, checking of exercises, seminars, home visits, as well as the consultation with the parents. The laboratories and equipment in classrooms are funded by DepEd as well as uh, supported by the local government unit. Available trainings are funded for teachers. However, these resources are still considered scarce for we have a large population of students and teachers as well as inadequate fund provided. Now, the main purpose of the input evaluation is to assess and identify different program strategies for attaining different objectives and to provide such information that assists in the usage of particular strategies. It is therefore important or necessary to focus on the personnel, resources, procedures, and decisions which specify new objectives. Now, the next step is to inquire how objectives can be acquired effectively and efficiently. Next is the process evaluation. This refers to the types of activities done in planning the instructional phase, okay? Done in planning the instructional phase. Now, according to the principal and teachers interviewed, they provide student-centered activities, active learning, reading skills, speaking, as well as writing skills. According to teacher number four, or teacher four, examples from the daily lives of children were given. Use of audiovisual aids are also, are also uh, practice in their school. And then they employ the lecture, activity, problem solving, and demonstration methods. When it comes to the co-curricular and curricular activities, the curricular and co-curricular activities develop students physically and mentally. They are motivated to participate in activities at district and national level that helps their social, moral, intellectual, and physical development. And they are also engaged to participate in games, speeches, quiz, and singing competitions that serve as their plas as platform in expressing themselves. Another teacher emphasized that there is an effective two-way communication between the teacher and the students, teacher and teacher, teacher and administration. Teacher 6 emphasized that there is a flexible environment, while teacher 7 said that student learning is measured comprehensively through regular assessments, both formal and informal. And in the senior high school or in the Philippines, we have 
work immersion in senior high school. Now, senior high school students are immersed with the work conditions during their two-week work immersion program. According to DEPED Order No. 30, Series 2017, one of the goals of the K-12 Basic Education Program is to develop in learners the competencies, work ethic, and values relevant to pursuing further education and joining the world of work. Work immersion will help develop among the learners' life and career skills. Another engagement of students is a national, regional, division, district, and school-level competitions that develop their well-being. Now, last but not least is the product evaluation. The product evaluation assesses outcomes and outputs, short and long-term, intended and unintended, which not only keeps track but also focuses on the fulfillment or not of objectives. According to the findings, it emphasizes that when there are effective environment, appropriate resources, relevant content, proper and effective teaching and learning, use of different teaching and learning methodologies and strategies, this result to great impact on students' skills, attitudes, behavior, grades, and performance. According to the teachers, the more student-friendly the environment, the more effective is the learning. Students take part in activities and achieve high positions at national and international level. Students of this school are successfully making their places in society by excelling in different fields, including engineering, medicine, and other sciences. However, there are still negative observations. Okay. For example, students are pressured to some extent and focus on the rote learning of the content or students are pressured to just memorize the content okay, in fear of failing the subject. Due to this cramming system, there is a huge pressure on students which affects their creativity and capabilities. Communication between teachers and students needs to be more friendly and comfortable so as to allow students to share their problems. And some teachers focus more on theoretical work and less on practical work. Another is that school buildings are, are for rent or are on rent, okay? Which gives the need to provide the proper space for the students for teaching and learning to happen. They are, there is also a need to provide appropriate facilities, including library, auditorium, science, laboratories, to each branch of the school separately. And a need for more facilities to students based on new technology, coping the needs of the 21st century. Now, the CITP model helps in evaluating the quality and accountability of education at the school level. This is according to Aziz, Mahmoud, and Rehman in 2018. Many resource researches have been conducted using the CITP model of evaluation. For educational programs, quality of education, courses, and textbook evaluation. According to Stoffel Bean in 1971, the CITP model helps in both internal and external evaluations. Helps in evaluating the credibility and accountability of education and assist the evaluator and staff in decision making. Thus, without context, input, process, and product evaluation model, we cannot highlight the errors, weaknesses, or strengths of the educational system which may lower its effectiveness. For more details, here are the references I've used for this lesson. And that ends my discussion on curriculum evaluations using CITP model. Again, I enjoy Svelenzuela. Thank you. Keep safe and God bless.